Do you want to introduce me or shall I introduce myself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Jason, why don't you go uh, ahead? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, you could just introduce yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hi, I'm uh, Matt Howard. I'm a <clears throat> smart contracts engineer for Chia, Chia Networks. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about decentralized identity in Chia. <clears throat> so uh, the first question is what is decentralized identity? And this ties into the question <clears throat> the, of what is identity? And online, identity at the moment takes the form of usernames, of email addresses, and Facebook OAuth tokens. Um, and it, it's more or less a way of identifying people. Uh, and you can then use that for authentication and to form groups. Uh, and decentralized identity is this new experimental standard that's been defined by W3C and is being researched actively by the Identity Foundation, DIF. And in practice, there are a number of different implementations of this standard where people are, people are working out what the best approaches are. And there's a quote here from the W3C spec that it is a globally unique persistent identifier that does not require a centralized registration authority because it is generated and or registered cryptographically. Um, but uh, the disclaimer I want to say is that this is a developing technology and there's different uh, strands and, and ideas. And even for me and Chia, this is developing tech. Um, so if you watch this recording in the future, subject to change. Um, so here is another quote uh, that I thought sum summed it up pretty well. Um, uh, you can screenshot, pause the video if we read this. There's a link at the bottom. I'll um, send the PowerPoint through so you can look at the slides as well. Um, so what does this actually mean? Effectively, what you get is URLs for people. And it takes the form of this. DID, that's the equivalent of like the protocol description. So for a website, this would be HTTP colon slash slash. Uh, but because there's multiple implementations, it needs an extra section to specify which implementation you're looking at. So for me, I'll be talking about DID Chia. And then you have the actual address, which is uh, an alphanumeric string that's dependent on the implementation. And then this uh, can be resolved to a single DID subject. A DID subject can be a person, a group, an organization, physical thing, digital thing, whatever, it doesn't matter, but it resolves to uniquely one identity. And here you can see that multiple people have implemented this, sometimes even on the same uh, blockchain. And uh, in particular, you, uh, you'll notice that this one is deprecated, again, emphasizing that this is all in development, lots of uh, experimental ideas in this space. Um, so there's some concept of a URL that connects to, a, to an identity and that can be used to authorize. So before we go on, I'll talk a little bit about Chia as well. Uh, Chia is a new cryptocurrency that was founded by Bram Cohen. He's the man who invented uh, BitTorrent. So uh, the copy of Ableton you have on your laptop, thanks to him. There were, his, his thoughts on the matter were that there were several inefficiencies in Bitcoin that could be fixed. Uh, the main one being the horrific use of proof of work, which is bad for the environment and centralization. And there's much literature on this. And also the Bitcoin script is not very good. It's very complicated and verbose but actually difficult to wrangle anything useful out of it. And it uses the stack memory uh, model, which is, again, not great. But he recognized that the two good things that Bitcoin does is the UTXO model for coins, and it has true Nakamoto consensus. Now, the consensus stuff is not really uh, what I'm talking about today. I'm here to talk about smart contracts. So the smart contracts, uh, it's 
I'm assuming that the people here have some familiarity with smart contracts in Ethereum. And the critical difference between uh, Chia's ideas for smart contracts and Ethereum's is that in Ethereum, a smart contract is an object that you interact with. Uh, but in Chia, a smart contract exists inside of the coin. The smart contract is uh, a program that is a fundamental part of the coin that controls its behavior. So the, the strap line we have is smart coins, not smart contracts. Um, we use a, a Lisp based language. So it's a functional language, which gets rid of the, uh, the stack memory problems. And we also, um, we have much less information when calculating a coin's ID. So if you're familiar with what SegWit is, uh, segregated witness in Bitcoin, it's like that, but more. We, we pull out as much as possible to have the minimum viable, sensible uh, coin ID, which we've worked out to be the parent ID, the puzzle hash, and the amount. And that's what makes up a coin's ID. And that puzzle hash is the commitment to a puzzle, which is the contract that exists inside of the coin. Um, and then when you spend it, you reveal the puzzle's, puzzles uh, source, and then it runs the code as part of the spend. So um, I just wanted to throw in a quick like guide to Cheerlist because I wasn't sure if what the familiarity with Lisp would be like in this group. Um, so there's a, a link there if you want to play with Cheerlisp. Uh, we've got the CLVM tools. That's uh, CLVM is the Cheerlisp virtual machine, and that can run Cheerlisp. And in Cheerlisp, you've got atoms and lists. An atom is any literal value, so integers, hex values, strings, doesn't matter, it's all the same. Uh, and then you have lists, which contain zero or more atoms or lists inside of them. And then everything is built up out of that. Uh, Programs are lists where the first item in the list is an operator, and then it's just Polish notation or prefix notation. So instead of saying 10 plus 5 equals 15, you would say uh, plus 10, 5 equals 15. Uh, and then we also have the solution, which is when you spend it, you pass in some information. Uh, this isn't so important because I don't go too much into code, but that's how Lisp looks. That's how Cheerlisp looks. So how does decentralized identity work in Chia? The What's really nifty and the the sort of the, the main point of this talk is that by putting the puzzle inside of the coin, it enables some really cool functionality. So we can do it where a coin is the identity, where you put a puzzle inside of a coin that ensures that it follows the DID rules. So this includes, you don't want it to be uh, duplicable. You don't want anyone to be able to like steal it or recreate it. And you want it to be able to send like unique messages for authentication saying that I, my ID, Matt Howard, authenticate on the blockchain for the world to see whatever. Uh, I can authenticate anything I like through these messages. And if you, if you have those two, then you can expand it to, to do anything you like, really. That's, that's the, uh, the meat and taters of DID. So what can this be used for? And this is, this is what we, we are currently using it for, is identity-based recovery. So this is the case that you have your money, and you can put it into a vault. And you have the keys to the vault and you can spend your money at any time. But if you lose those keys, you have trusted identities that can verify that you are who you say you are and allow you to access that money if you coordinate it. So I don't know if any of you have ever like lost it or had to recover a Facebook account. They do something basically exactly like this, where they say, uh, you need to get three friends and you need to have those th friends attest that you are actually trying to recover your account and you're not 
a, a hacker or a bad person. Uh, so this is like that, but with money uh, or like with identity. So uh, the flow of this generally is like this. You're a wallet with coins and you can turn one of those coins into an identity. And then that identity will have some value inside of it but fundamentally the, you're using it as an ID and until you cash out, that's an ID that also just happens to have money in it. Um, and the unique ID. So if you remember the uh, DID Chia code, this comes from the ID of the Genesis coin in our implementation. And what's neat is that means that once you have that ID, you can trace the, uh, the history. So anytime something happens with a digital ID, or if you, say, if you just have that URL link to an identity, you can trace it and find the most recent version, see all the information related to that identity by just following the, uh, the blockchain updates. Uh, so here, here's an example where the coin uh, sends out a message and creates a new version, and then perhaps it updates its recovery information. Um, as I said, that set of friends that allow you to um, recover. Uh, this is done basically by having two, um, two parts of the puzzle inside. You have the core, which will make sure that the identity related rules are enforced. You know, it asserts rules about uh, what you can and can't do as outputs. But other than that, it seeds way to the inner puzzle, which is this uh, instance specific, coin specific information. So that's where you'd keep your recovery information, your public key information for like what can, what can spend this coin generally. And th those two things are, wh are what constitutes the puzzle. Uh, and you can build up, um, you know, identity relationships of people who can recover you and uh, so on. Here is, here is a diagram showing that. Uh, so why is this implementation special compared to the other implementations I was showing? Well, the other implementations I was showing are based around public keys. Um, one question that you might have had when I was showing that definition about cryptographic identity is you might have thought, well, isn't that just what keys are? Well, yes, you can build decentralized identity around keys. But the problem is, if you lose your keys, or your keys get stolen, and you do a recovery, you're not regenerating the, the literal exact same keys, you're migrating that information to new key information, which means that your ID as far as other people are concerned, changes. What's great about doing it with coins is that if you recover your coin that holds your ID, then you still look the same to everybody else. So the, uh, again, I'd say this is similar to Facebook where you don't need to make a new account, but you get all your friends, you get the same account, but your password changes. Um, and the other thing that's cool about this particular one is it's based around decentralization. The coins are the contracts and it's native to the blockchain. Um, the Ethereum smart contracts, they are these wells of centralization on Ethereum. Any, with, with the uh, smart contracts on Ethereum, anytime the, there's a change of state, it's communication back to the monolith and back. And that is, uh, it's less, less decentralized. If you want to update it, then the smart contract has to go through the whole rigmarole. Everyone needs to check in with the contract. Whereas here, the coins are, are free to be their own individual instances. It is more decentralized. And from, from that, the question, where does the research go from here? So in Chia, we are looking to build smart transactions that can interact with identities you can, because the identities are uh, native to the, to the um, cheerless language, you can then build other things that interact with them. I can send money through 
that is uh, only approved that, that the transaction is only valid if it is approved by a known identity, for example. We can build groups and authentication. So you could imagine a university group and uh, they authorize the uh, DIDs of its students and then they can do on blockchain activity that only people who are authenticated inside of that group are allowed to participate in. And the final place that we want to take this is contact methods. At the moment, most DID research is, is through the lens of authentication. But could we push it further so that you can contact an ID? If you have that URL, you can have some way of, of contacting that person. Could we make it so that there is arbitrary readable information on a coin that so when people follow the DID URL, they can see some publicly presented information. And uh, that's sort of where we're taking it. And that is uh, it for the presentation. Uh, I know I kept it kind of high level. I can go into more technical details um, if people are interested in that, but uh, I guess the floor is open for questions. Yeah, I have a question. Um, what kind of research have you done currently on the on how did how would you contact uh, a did? You, you were talking about URLs being embedded in the ID, and I'm wondering how that would be implemented. So, this is something that we're thinking about and having conversations about, but in terms of code written, not very much. Um, it's something that we're interested in, but most most research around DID at the moment is through the lens of authentication, and contacting is sort of a, a different way of thinking about it. Um, and we're trying to we're trying to solve that problem of how to get both, but authentication is the main priority of it through the specification of W three C. So I'm pretty interested in this idea of the um, did being in the um, in the coin, so that then you can update. You know, you can recover. Well, you call, you call it recover, but it's basically reissuing keys, issuing new keys for an account that's been lost. Um, how would this affect like the blockchain in terms of like um, like bootstrapping from Genesis versus like having checkpoints or something? Would that affect it at all, or would that make a, I mean. No. It's what's great is that um, it, it's completely consistent. This is all happening just through the smart contracts. Um, this is what is so cool about it. You don't need to mess with the chain. Um, so you remember that diagram? I'll, I'll share my screen again. Um, I had that diagram about uh, the construction of it. Uh, so the inner puzzle, what you what you're changing is the inner puzzle. What you're saying is okay, my owner has new keys now, but the identity, which is wrapped in the core, remains the same. It just, um, you transfer ownership. And that's just a spend. That's a normal spend. And that on the blockchain, it just looks like a, a spend of that coin, um, but it retains its, its special properties. Uh, the public key, private key, the key pairs, those are different, but that's not, it's not doing anything like rewinds no, no weird stuff like that. It's, it's was, a totally normal spend. I was actually kind of wondering if it could like allow for pruning of the blockchain. Like if there ever was a case where it got too, too big, too much information, like because you have some of these components built in, I don't know. Uh, sorry, you broke my word with this, but. <laughs> um, so these are just normal transactions. It's not like they, uh, am I disconnected? Can you guys hear me? I hear you. Oh, okay. I hear you, it's got a little choppy. Yeah, it has got a bit choppy. Oh, the internet in this place isn't the best. Oh dear. Um, but no, these are just uh, normal transactions and it's not going to use up like, 
it's it's not going to cause like a crypto kitty situation if that's what your fear is. All right, I think the internet stabilized a little now. What um what issue are you um referring to for the crypto kitties? Um, well, Adam's question was about co like congestion, right? Um, or actually, I'm not not quite sure. Sorry, I was actually kind of wondering like if if the coins have this much information, like what could that possibly do something even for I don't know something like pruning the blockchain, where if the blockchain starting to get too much information on it, you wanted to say okay, we don't need everyone to have all the blocks to come from Genesis type of deal and have ch either checkpoints or pruning or something like that? Oh, um, I don't think Chia has any plans to do like folding the chain or it's always gonna start from Genesis. Uh, so you are going to need, if you're interested in this information to you know look through the blockchain. But I think uh, in our implementation, we are planning something to do with the light clients uh, that makes this easier for people to get at on a skim, but that's a little bit uh, beyond my remit. Does that answer your question? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question on um, you. You said that um, the Chia smart contracts are much less restrictive, and there's no stack memory. I was wondering if you could elaborate some more on that. Okay, so um, it's uh, stack memory uh, operations in Bitcoin. It's 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 based on a stack, right? You push information and pop information off the stack, um, but with functional languages. It's all, it's all based around eval. Um, so you don't, there's no state to store. There's no, there's no memory like that. You, it's, um, it's not a stack based language. I don't know uh, how familiar you guys are with, with list, but. I see it. So it's because Lisp is uh, more functional. Yeah, it's a, it's a functional language, which means that there is no um, stored memory. There's no, there's no stack memory. Right, okay. Of your current um, research, uh, I, I, of the current research agenda that you have, what are you most interested in? the future with regards to DID or yeah in regards to DID um, groups offers a lot of opportunities if you have authenticated in groups and some way of um, having that very neatly then this uh, does allow for really cool things because um, the idea of um, groups is quite powerful you can uh you can think of it in terms of the example i gave was a university but you could think about it in terms of um like le like legal rights like these people are authorized to do this and that can be enforced by the blockchain you can do it as a nation like uh for example if uh, the uk government wanted to hand out crypto pounds they, they would want to make sure it was only going to British citizens and they could do uh, the, a British citizens group of identities. Um, stuff like that. I think groups has a lot of uh, potential. Those are all my questions. I don't know if anybody else has any questions.
the uh, I guess I, I can plug the uh, Chia key base. So if anyone has any questions in the future, then there's basically always someone online because of time zones. Um, so if you uh, can you pass on the link to that to your to your mailing list? Yeah, I can do that. And, uh, if that's if that's all the all the questions, um, that was that was my presentation on the matter. Uh, I think if people are interested, then they're welcome to play with the smart contracts in the Cheerlist language. Um, personally, I, I, I think this stuff is really cool. And I was, I was an Ethereum developer before I was uh, working on Cheer and hands down, it's much better this way. Um, though there is a little bit of a learning curve because it's a, it's a different way of thinking about it. But uh, if, ever, if everyone's... Uh, satisfied and I've answered everyone's questions. I have one question. Uh, what was I, the most difficult part of transitioning besides from the, the language in going from Ethereum smart contract development to Lisp smart contract development? Um, it was the, due to the, the, the paradigm shift. In Ethereum, you can store state really um, I, I used to program uh, like Java and Python and going from that to Solidity, it makes a lot of sense. And I think that's why part of the reason that Ethereum is so popular is that it's sort of easy. Solidity is kind of familiar to anybody who's done programming like that before, but there isn't stored state in, in Chia, um, which is a feature and that's good. Uh, but thinking about it through the, the functional language perspective, uh, it is it is different, uh, and those cheerless examples I gave earlier, those were simple examples. It can get it can get pretty complex, <laughs> but but it's fun. Um, I don't know. It, it's the kind of programming that that I enjoy. Did you do any of that programming before? Any functional programming? Yeah. Um, not really, no. It, I I had uh, done courses on it uh, at my university, but uh, that I was coming at it as a uh, solidity programmer. That was that was my background, um, and I saw it kind of joined the smart contracts team, and uh, I worked on uh, color coins before I did uh, DID, and color coins are now live. You can go and play with them. Uh, and now I do, and now I'm on on DID. Um, awesome. I'm curious about your thoughts on um, the kind of head start Ethereum has with uh, smart contracts and having that ecosystem already built out. Gia can compete or coexist with them in the in the marketplace. So. Um, my opinion on the matter is that I, I believe the tech is good. Um, without bluster, I think that what we're building is great. Um, the difficulty is that there is so much around Ethereum already. They do, they, they, it does already exist, like you say. Uh, and <laughs> uh, we need to sort of convince people all these problems that they have with Ethereum, we can make them go away. And uh, like, because I'm, I'm still in contact with lots of Ethereum guys and uh, it's all, it's always the same complaints, you know, that, uh, the, the tech stack is lots of third party stuff. Everyone's having to you know, use Truffle and this and that. And uh, the test environments aren't necessarily like the, uh, the real environments and there's a, there's a lot of headache and pain that comes with the Ethereum development. So my belief is that we can win people over uh, by, by convincing them that we can make those headaches go away. That's, that's my opinion on the matter. Very cool. Any, any other questions from anybody? Uh, how's the mainnet launch schedule looking? Um, I'm, uh, I'm not sure, I, um, what the, what the official position is, but it's, it's coming along. It's, uh, 
Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm authorized. Uh, I don't know if the information that I have is like authorized for public release. So I'm, I'm careful not to run my mouth, but it's, it's coming along. It's, it's looking pretty nice. We're, we're, we're all, we're all happy. It, it'll be there when it's ready. You, if you want a, a better answer, you might be better asking uh, Keybase. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a, that's, that's outside of my remit. Yeah, I think the, um, the consensus in Keybase was that they're expecting Mainnet to be launched at the end of this year. That's what mm -hmm. I uh, remember seeing uh, Hoffman saying. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> so how could, how could we get involved and um, get interested in Chia as uh, getting started in it right now, just as non-developers, uh, like non, you know, working in your... Oh, so if you want to get involved, we have a test net that is la active and live now. And we have software that you can install to participate. Uh, you can, so our equivalent to mining is farming. And we have that system in setup. The block, we have a blockchain that is live and real with true Nakamoto consensus. And you can run that. And you can check out chia.net and install our software. It's all open source. Uh, and you can you can join in, and the plots that you plot on te testnet, um, uh, that is like a commitment to space. Uh, so our our whole thing is that instead of using GPU power, you use hard drive space. So the uh, commitments to hard drive space that you make now, uh, or like you make during testnet, they will be applicable as soon as we roll over to mainnet. So you can get involved now, even if you don't want to do smart contract programming. I would say to um, put farming in a good light, my experience with trying to um, join the testnet competition for Oasis Labs was much more difficult than uh, joining the testnet and farming on Chia. Um, so I don't know if that makes anyone like more interested in wanting to farm on Chia, but the experience that I had, which um, was back in I think February, is when I started. Um, it, was, it was very easy and simple relative to trying to um, mine on other test nets. It's 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 a process that we've deliberately tried to make uh, user friendly and, and streamlined. And if you do encounter any problems, as I said, support and uh, questions are uh, answered all the time on our key base. Uh, so if you're, if you're even a little bit interested, I would say check out the key base. Uh, is everyone happy with that? Yeah, thanks for, yeah. thanks for the presentation. It was really interesting. All right. Uh, thank you for, for having me. Thank you for the interest. I'll, uh, I'll send the PowerPoint and some other resources through uh, so that that can go out to your mailing list. But if that's it, thanks and goodbye. Sounds great. Have an awesome afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.